In previous videos, I've talked about how life is about cultivating calmness. Our calmness is what allows us to perceive the world in an open and vulnerable state without our anxious minds hijacking our ability to think rationally. But we are all imperfect beings. And despite many of our natural tendencies to ignore our feelings, we still each have individual triggers. Triggers are stimuli that we perceive with our senses that our brain associates with a memory. It could be a spoken phrase, a picture, a smell, or anything that reminds you of an unpleasant memory. These triggers are often tied to being vulnerable or feeling attacked, and as a result, cause us to feel shame. It takes multiple occurrences combined with self-observation and journaling to recognize these triggers. For example, I might notice that some of the symptoms of my anxiety, my heart rate increases, my breath becomes shallow, I struggle to maintain eye contact, I have a hard time keeping a conversation going, I zone out, I'm short-tempered, I get defensive, or one of the biggest things of all, I keep all this information to myself. One of the most important practices of self-observation is to not only learn what triggers you, but also how your brain and thinking patterns change under the perceived threat. Your brain is only reacting based on your lived experience, and in fight or flight mode, it's prioritizing survival over calm, rational thought. Our brains perceive that we are in physical or emotional danger, and we become very defensive. If we're arguing with someone else, we may not offer any space for listening or loving communication. An experienced self-observer knows what things, even if irrational, trigger their brains. They're able to quickly recognize the shift in their emotional landscape and be fully aware that their fearful brain will make any reconciliation extremely difficult. They've watched how a disagreement can spiral into a shouting contest or how we can go completely silent, suffering in our discontent, convincing ourselves it's easier to just say nothing enough times that we can see the unhealthy patterns that arise from acting out of fear. Eventually you may decide enough is enough or maybe your partner will break up with you saying I can't be with someone who has no control over themselves at emotionally charged times. The secret to living a happy life lies in cultivating calmness. Since most of us live with very little actual threat to our life, most of the causes of our fight or flight activation are irrational. Being in this triggered state provides only negative effects on our emotional lives, significantly reduced calmness, rational thinking, communication, and ability to listen. Being frequently stressed also releases high amounts of cortisol, which is created in the adrenal glands to calm us down. The long-term effects of too much cortisol include chronic diseases, weight gain, lack of energy, difficulty concentrating, and a compromised immune system. It's very harmful to allow ourselves to be chronically stressed. We minimize stress by having a plan to get ourselves out of the anxious state. If we're aware that we're being triggered and how our thinking changes, we have the choice to act against our ego's will. We must make the choice that digs into discomfort, speaking truth to our shame, communicating why we feel hurt, especially when it feels impossible, because this is the quickest path back to calmness. The conversation is never easy, but it is necessary. Otherwise, you just prolong the anxious state. If you recognize that something is upsetting for you, take a deep breath, open your mouth and calmly say, is it okay if I talk about something that made me anxious? When blank happened, I felt blank. If you find that the chronic triggers for your anxiety are specific people, consider how to limit the amount of time that you spend with them. Your mental health always comes first and you can't take care of anyone else if you can't take care of yourself.